and of course we don't really have enough detail here, but, but just generally within this box, which, which I also find maybe uh, sort of uh, appropriate that they put this box around the, this is the Lake Missoula Scablands flood area. And, you know, generally the, I, the thing that, that, that I'm trying to get pushed, push the discussion past is this segregation of these, these different events that have occurred. And, one of the things that like Brad and I have been doing in our expeditions and research is we've, we've been exploring all along this Southern margin here of the ice sheet and everywhere at every point along that margin, you'll find the evidence of these gigantic meltwater flows rushing off the ice sheets, right? Gigantic. Generally in this case, a gigantic, right? This is, this is the area. So this right here would be the Columbia basalt plateau. And uh, this was this, the scene of the, channel scab lands in eastern Washington that were studied famously by J. Harlan Bretz. When you go to the east of there, this blue right in here would be Glacial Lake Missoula, which is occupying mountain valleys of western Montana. And one of the great leap forwards in understanding these uh, mega flood events uh, at the end of the last ice age was the, the connecting of the research in the Lake Missoula Basin and the research uh, in Eastern Washington and showing that they were linked, right? And, and we will be getting into that in, in considerable detail so that people really can get the sense of what that is, what the controversies are, and certainly there are controversies and some of the ideas we're proposing are controversial. And uh, we've already noticed that some of the defenders of the sort of the entrenched status quo ideas are already taking issue with some of the things that we've been some of the ideas that we've we've been expressing here interestingly what i've seen is most of these uh, attacks and criticisms are not really criticizing what we actually said but what they're imagining we said right so but then you come east of there and all along here you're going to find like all across the great plains here you're going to find this succession of these huge spillways where where water gushed off and 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 carved these tremendous valleys that now are basically conveying the much smaller modern rivers. I mentioned earlier that if you follow a, 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 a flow of water down the ice-free corridor where it uh, discharges from the mouth down here, leads directly into the headwaters of the Missouri River Valley. And then when you come over here, you get these two lobes, the Superior Lobe and the Michigan Lobe. And yes, there are all along here, there's evidences of these catastrophic outburst floods. You come over here, all along in here, you find the same thing. Uh, you know, a lot of the waters discharging off of this lobe fed into the, uh, it was all part of the catchment basin of what is now the Ohio River. And so there are numerous studies of the Ohio River that show that there were massive floods rushing through there, uh, meltwater floods that in some cases were over 200 feet deeper than the modern flood level of the, of the Ohio River. And then you come up here into the Northeast, and this is what we were talking about earlier with the Connecticut River and the Hudson River and the St. Lawrence Seaway, which discharged up through here, but you can't see it because it's under the ice. Um, all of these river valleys show unambiguous evidence of gigantic current flows through them. What's interesting is all of these, a lot of the rivers that didn't necessarily ha head onto the ice sheets directly also uh, have evidence of gigantic flows. And we're going to be getting into all of that um, down the road a little ways. So maybe this is just kind of a, a, an advanced preview of what we will be talking about because We've got hundreds, if not thousands, of, of awesome graphics and images and stuff to share with people so that they can get, begin to get the picture here of, of, of what happened. The drumlin fields that Brad mentioned would be basically right under this lobe here. We, we've traversed these drumlin fields on our most recent passage. They're difficult to see because, you know, they're forested. If you really want to see drumlins, you have to get to where they're not covered in trees. And again, we'll probably devote at least a whole episode to drumlins because drumlins are one of the keys to deciphering these events that, that transpired uh, 12, 13, 14,000 years ago, as, as we will be demonstrating. Um, you know, look, look, look east of there, just, just on the west side of Lake Michigan there. That's, that's right, right, here, under, right, right well, here. 
No, a little east of there even. Here. Here. No, east of there. Lake Michigan's there hanging down. Yeah, so right under there oh, over was here. Where, okay. where the yeah. – Yeah, over in Wisconsin right there. Yeah, so then yeah, down yeah. in that end is where the Illinois River comes out, right down there, yeah. And you just posted a picture, didn't you, that was taken on our last field trip? I think I saw a picture of me standing in one of the, the chasms. Yeah, on uh, Buffalo Island there on the Illinois River, right. Is that where that – okay. Right. Yeah, and you, you, once, you, once you start seeing what turbulent water flows, how that erodes various kinds of rocks, it, it's very distinct. And so you can begin to recognize it in places. And, and you know, one of the, the gratifying things is that for me, and I know for Brad too, is the number of people that have commented and saying, well, yeah, I've been seeing these, these landforms for forever, and I just didn't know what I was looking at. Now I can see it. And so that's a big part of what this – this work is about it's not only the work of you know discovering and deciphering and and recovering this story that has been lost for 10 or 12,000 years but also to give people the tools to go out for themselves and to begin to see this stuff and and begin to decipher it too because this is really too big for just a, a small like what do we got here five guys this is too 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 big for five guys we need hundreds of people out exploring these and yeah. thinking about it crowdsourced explore, exploration exactly. absolutely absolutely because this is uh, you know i mean there are some major scientific stories of our time but this has to be right up there amongst the top five or even top three uh because these events that happened uh, in this epoch are, are critical to understanding the world as it is today because the world as it is today we have essentially rebuilt the world out of the wreckage of the former world I mean, very literally, that's, that's the case. So if we want to understand this world, we have to understand the raw material out of which it was built. And we're also confronted with the fact that traditions, not only, not, not only the hard sciences and the soft sciences, like physics as a hard science and geology as a soft science or archaeology, but also the idea of, of traditions that have come down, the legends, the mythology, See, this is, this is something now where we can begin to look at a lot of these traditional accounts that have come down to us through new eyes and realizing that these aren't just, you know, they're not just um, fear-based, uh, you know, the, the, the un, unscientific imagination conjuring up these images of how the world was created you know, battling of giants, the ice giants in the Norse, Norse tradition, the, 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 the cosmic battles in the sky with dragons, the stories of great floods. See, we're in a position now where we can realize, okay, within those, within that context, within that framework that's been handed down to us, there is real solid information. And we just have to you know, figure out how to extract that information and realize that, yeah, it's going to have the accretion of centuries and millennia, but Within there is is valid information that can help to give us deep insight into the history of this planet and what our ancestors, those who came before us on this planet, what they experienced. And then again, you know, the implication is that what's happened before could happen again. One of the things yeah. I would quickly like to address is that a lot of folks, now I won't say a lot, but there's a, a share of percentage of them that that somehow take this and maybe interpreted it in a negative way, almost like that we're, you know, that we're, we're telling some kind of doomsday scenario here. You know, we're making some kind of prediction about the end of the world. And, you know, I've, I've seen comments where people almost have, Oh, I'm despairing thinking about this. I don't look at it that way. See, I, I don't look at it that way at all because I look at it that, you know, if we come to understand these forces of nature, that's how we can work with them. That's how we can adapt to them. And we have to come to understanding these forces of nature because these things have happened. These, we've ha this planet has been subjected to ice ages. This planet has been subjected to gigantic volcanic eruptions that could completely destabilize modern civilization. It has been subjected to repeated cosmic impacts which again is something we're going to be talking in great detail about because, you know, just what was yesterday, the day before another space rock flies very close to the earth. I mean, it's almost happening on a, on a weekly basis now. Yep. And, and the question I have been posing all along, literally we were talking about this when Brad and I met 22, 23 years ago, 
is this just because we now have enhanced technological capabilities that we're seeing stuff that's yeah. been flying by all the time? We just didn't have the sensory capabilities of seeing it before. Or is the flux act the enhan- actually becoming enhanced? Right. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a, a great, really yeah. critical question right there. Yeah. And the thing is, is that whatever the answer is, you know, the, if the answer is, well, this is just the, the, the ongoing flux, it's, a, it's, it's the, 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 you know, it's what's been going by us regularly all the time. We just haven't been seeing it. Well, then the question becomes, well, I mean, we've been pretty damn lucky then, you know, that we're not getting pelted more frequently. Then obviously, if the contra the 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 the, the um, other explanation that the flux is actually becoming more enhanced, that would not bode well for our future. 